Welcome to the Chan 7. In this video, I'll be continuing with our grade specific choices, this time with our fifth grade choices. If you're new here, I'm Yuri, dentist turned homeschool mom to five kids. Next school year, we'll have a seventh grader, a fifth grader, a third grader, a kindergartner, and a preschooler. We are wrapping up our eighth year of homeschooling. And on our channel, we like to share our homeschool journey, flip throughs and reviews on various resources, our hobbies and interests, and read alouds that we have really come to enjoy. If any of these interest you, we would love for you to subscribe and join us. When choosing homeschool material for our son, I try to make sure to find material that is short enough for him to not get frustrated and also easy enough for me to be able to juggle toddlers while teaching him. Although he is getting a lot better at being independent, he does rely on my help very frequently. We have tried several different materials to find out what works best for our son's learning style. And because he's on the neurodivergent spectrum, there have been times when it's been a struggle and a fight to the point where I'm just fed up and done and ready to put him in the school system to teach him. But we have come to appreciate with its challenges how God gives different strengths and gifts to each person. While our son struggles with language arts, he excels in math. In this video, I'm going to share with y'all several materials that we want to try for our son. And hopefully some of these materials will, and information will help you. But if you have any resources that have worked for a kid, especially who, one that is struggling with writing, please share. Okay, I'm going to start with language arts. And I want to give you a little background about our language arts experience. Our son had started out with CLE's language arts and CLE has several worksheet pages for every lesson. And that was a little bit of a struggle for him because he doesn't like to write. He needed my help for every single section. I love CLE's language arts and also their reading program. And our oldest daughter, who will be a rising seventh grader, loves CLE and she wanted to switch back to CLE after trying different programs. But our son is a little different. So we had to switch him and try, we decided to try the Good and the Beautiful's Language Arts because we had heard so many good things about the program. And so we decided to try it out. However, the Good and the Beautiful is beautiful, but the layout and format was pretty distracting for him because there were a lot of words on the page and he needed my help and guidance for every single step. And I was hoping to not have to help him as much, especially since we had an infant and a toddler, but he needed my help and he would get frustrated and I would get frustrated with him and it would just become a bit of a mess. I do have a separate video on why we quit the good and the beautiful. And I'll have that link below because that one, that video explains it much better than I can in this one. But after the good and the beautiful experience for his third grade, we decided to try easy grammar. Instead of putting him in the fourth grade easy grammar, uh, we decided to put him in the third grade level so that he can get used to a new program. And also since language arts is a little bit of a struggle for him, and it happened to be a great fit for him. The lessons are short and clear, and that's exactly what he needed. So we are going to continue using the Easy Grammar system or program and move on to grade four. So this is what he'll be using for his fifth grade. And along with Easy Grammar, since I had this program for a while and I've been wanting to try it, I have Fix It Grammar, the nose tree that I want to try with our son. So I think it'll be a fun way to get some practice on trying to identify all the parts of speech by editing and correcting a story. And 
so by the end of the program, the kids will have corrected an entire story. So how fun is that? Also, our son loves anything to do with games. But honestly, what kid doesn't love anything to do with games? So we are going to continue playing this parts of speech bingo game in order to solidify the eight parts of speech. It's basically a bingo game. You have these bingo cards and then all the little chips that I have here um, that you punch out. And I have, a, I have the re other game pieces in this bag. And then we just draw one and then play bingo. So that's always fun. And I also have a subscription for a night zookeeper that I got for our son so that it can maybe help with his writing. But our older daughter tends to play with it a lot more. But he does enjoy Night Zookeeper when he does get on there and plays. I, I don't have it to show you because obviously it's an online subscription, but it's a great program and it makes it really fun for in, and engaging for the kids. And they're able to learn vocabulary, spelling, writing skills, and also get feedback from the company while having fun playing in a way that is so fun and engaging that you don't even realize that you're learning at the same time. Okay, now on to spelling. Previously, I had kind of raved about how we loved Evan Moore's spelling, and we do, and we, um, his spelling, our son's spelling had improved so much through the school year. But after taking, after having the kids take their standardized tests for the year, I realized that we might want to try something else for him to see if something else will help him to improve. And while I was proctoring our son taking the standardized test, I noticed that he missed at least 70% of the spelling presented on the test. And I hate to jump to anything so quickly because we had only used Evan Moore spelling for one year and we were so sure of using the next level for him. Actually, this one here. I got this one for him to use for next year. But since last year, I was debating anyway between Evan Moore and also 180 days of spelling and word study, I think I'm going to go ahead and try this program and mix it up and change it up a little bit. I like that 180 days does a good job of just introducing some spelling rules and also has kind of like a list style that maybe Evan Moore is more like. So it's a good balance between that to where it's not so over exhausting on the spelling rules, which is one of the problems we had in the past. And I had ordered both the level four and level five. And just looking through the programs, I noticed that the words are a bit more challenging than the words that are presented in Evan Moore spelling. So we're gonna go ahead and go with level four. Already, it looks like our son's gonna get a good amount of vocabulary practice from 180 days of spelling but I have been wanting to try Word Roots from the Critical Thinking Company. And so I like, this one is intended for grades three to four. So I may have our rising third grader and our son who's a rising fifth grader kind of work on this workbook together. But I like that Word Roots takes words from their original Greek and Latin. And depending on the prefixes or suffixes added to the words, you can see how words change in their meanings. And I like that we'll be learning why a family of words mean what they do and how they all connect, depending on ch little changes. At first impression, the program looks very nice and clearly laid out. So I'm pretty excited to try it out. For reading, we are going to continue with the CLE reading program. And we have always loved the CLE reading program. The readers are, have great stories and they have some good lasting moral lessons in them that us parents would approve of. And the program, you know, does at times pose some challenges for our son because, you know, language arts is not his strength, but he still enjoys it and it has improved his reading skills and his reading comprehension so much. I love that the program is clearly laid out and broken up into these bite-sized chunks with these work workbooks. There are five of them in the grade five. 
Um, these workbooks, the company will call light units. So you're going to get five light units. And in the light units, you're going to cover co reading comprehension, vocabulary, poetry, Bible memorization, and other literary devices. And each light unit will include two quizzes and a test. And those are good for if you want to test your kids or quiz them, but also to gauge how your student is doing. For handwriting, in the past we have used a reason for handwriting, the penmanship that is provided from the CLE language arts, and also the good and the beautiful's cursive. But this past year, we actually didn't use a handwriting program, but I figured this coming school year, I decided to pick up some handwriting again and go with some cursive to brush up on our cursive. So I chose to go with the scholastic cursive writing practice, jokes and riddles. And I thought that would just be a fun way to get some cursive in and also at the same time, learn some jokes. Hopefully he'll enjoy that. For copywork, I, I feel like you can pretty much use anything, but for this coming school year, I figured we would try to copy these history sentences from the classical conversations cycle three to kind of solidify the memory work from the program. For typing, we have tried the good and the beautiful and also the free resource from typing.com. And this year, our son had pretty much been just typing his papers that were due for the Classical Conversations Essentials program. And he was getting a lot of pra uh, practice typing there. So we will probably just continue to practice typing as we try to do the IEW structure and style at home this coming, this coming school year. So for writing, we will be going with IEW structure and style level A, but this time with the instructional videos because within the school year, we, we will be moving again. So we won't be joining a CC community. And our son doesn't like pretty much anything to do with writing, but now that he's familiar with how the IEW program works through, because we were working on it through CC, I'm hoping that it works out. Looking at the big picture, it doesn't matter if the kids are grade levels ahead or behind in any subject, but, our kids do a great job with math. And honestly, I have to credit that to my husband because he had been willing to help the kids with math since we were in different kind of seasons in life with the military life and also with all the seasons of having babies and toddlers. And he likes math and he enjoys it and he, does, and he enjoys teaching it. So my husband is the one who has been helping the kids with math. And that's probably why they're ahead, honestly, because if they're working with me, I doubt that they would be so much more ahead. So while our son is a grade level behind in his language arts courses, he is a grade level ahead in math. And, you know, we found that, you know, that is our son's strength. He loves anything to do with like building and math and logic and just, he's more of a math brain. He's definitely not the, reading slash art brain and one of the benefits and one of the things i love about homeschooling is that we can work where the kids are at instead of putting them where the school system would put them uh, we can work at their pace instead of going along with everyone in the same class right so for math we will continue to go with singapore math the primary mathematics and he will be doing grade six so we have always used Singapore math, and it does a great job with making math very applicable to the real world. And I actually have a video that I'll link below. So if you're interested, please check that video out. Our next two subjects are our family subjects. So science and history are the subjects that we usually loop and do as a family, and up until the sixth grade. So we have decided to go with Berean Builders, Science in the Ancient World. In the past, we had actually used the science in the beginning from Berean Builders, and I had considered using the science in the scientific revolution, but after looking through the books, I decided to go with the science in the ancient world and continue, basically continuing off where we had left off after using the science in the beginning. 
in this particular volume covers mainly what the ancient scientists had gotten right, but also what they had gotten wrong. I like that we can learn from our mistakes even in science. And that you know they were not perfect, and they had to experiment and figure things out and trial and error to make you know to get to where we are now. I like that Barium Builders covers a wide range of science topics like botany, astronomy, physics, chemistry, earth science, even music and sound, and um, human anatomy and medicine. And interestingly, during the ancient world. Most of the scientists were devout Christians who wanted to find out more about God's world. So how fun is it going to be to learn science as it has changed over time? And last but not least, because surprisingly has become my favorite subject to learn and to teach, especially since growing up, I did not like history at all, is history. <laughs> we're going to learn world history with not grasses from Adam to us. And currently we are using the Medieval History Volume 2 of Mystery of History. Um, but I'm going to change it up a little bit and take a little break from the Mystery of History and we're going to go with Not Grasses from Adam to Us. And I do have a video that explains better why we are going to make that little switch for a while. If, so if you're interested, I'll have that video linked down below. So that's what we have planned for our fifth grade son. He's had a great year of growth after a long, rough season, so I'm proud to say that things are looking up. If you have tried any of the resources or if you're using any of the resources that were mentioned in the video, please share your experiences in the comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please drop a comment. I love to chat. Along with a bunch of other videos, stay tuned as I share our other grade specific choices soon. And please make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any new videos coming up, along with the reviews for the resources that we have been fortunate to try. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and happy homeschooling.